Hi everybody and welcome back to another Amanda Ross Eventing Fit video. Today, another in exciting unboxing. Well, it's like an unboxing within an unparceling. So let's have a look. I kind of know what this is, it's quite exciting. It's from Bombers, Bombers Bits. But I don't actually know which ones because I'm getting a couple of replacements and some have to be ordered in and some they had in stock. This is very exciting. Oh my God, I didn't realize there were that many. Oh, there's four. Oh, you know what the best part is? Now, now, let's not be five. <laughs> okay. Back to being serious. <laughs> so we have number one, the DC Dressage Bomber Blue Swivel in 120. The same, same again. So I have two of those. And then we have oh, two of the same in a 115. So the ponies have, oh, they got the same width? Yep, the same width. So I have Huey and Lewis who have quite small mouths and Vendy who has um, a broader mouth. So left side facing forward you put the numbers this is it they all come with orange rings but obviously for the dressage we take the orange rings off and this middle part swivels and this is the bomber blue the blue plastic material so it's very exciting so i have basically four of these two in the 115 and two in the 120. Should we have a look at a 120? Yeah. <laughs> we should. We love new things, especially new things as cool as these that are my favourite bit ever. It's a bit hard to compare them. Oh, they're so wiggly. Yeah, you just see it's that little bit bigger, half a centimetre bigger. Anyway, super exciting. Thank you, Bombers and Top Tack. So today's video is going to be a bitting video and a lot of you had asked what sort of bits I use and I've been working with Bombers Bits for the last couple of years. Now, my uh, relationship with them started when I was introduced to their bitting system and their theories behind Bitting. And basically what that is, is that depending on the shape of the horse's mouth and whether they like, you know, prefer tongue pressure or pole pressure or bar pressure, depends on the shape of the bit that they're most comfortable in. And once I started trying a few different mouthpieces, I quickly realized that this is just so true. Um, you know, previously feeling horses go a little behind the bit, um, I realized they're sucking their tongue back and that that can indicate they don't like tongue pressure. Um, so once I tried these different bits and mouthpieces on the horses and suddenly realized that they go so much more kindly once you find the bit that suits them, made the world of difference to me. So you don't have to have a stronger bit to control your horse more. You need to have the right mouthpiece and shape for that horse's preferences. So that's a real game changer. Now, the way that bombers measure their bits um, is really great because I can basically have a bespoke bit created for my horse. So the first thing I do is I choose the mouthpiece. So for example, here we have this bit, which is the flexible mullen, like this. And this particular cheek is a Kimberly D. And you can also have the same bit but this particular cheek is a Williams. Now there's tons of different cheeks that you can get. Um, and so you can basically say, yes, I'd like this particular flexible melon. I'd like that in a 120 and I'd like it with an egg butt side or a loose ring side or a Dutch gag side or whatever it is that you want um, that's in the catalog. 
So um, just to show you here, these are the main bits that I write in. So, and these are the snaffles. We've got, as I mentioned, the flexible mullen. And this bit, um, Zazi and Lewis go in this, and this is for quite soft mouthed horses. Um, as you can see, it's really smooth the whole way around, has a little bit of flex in them, and it really encourages these particular horses to take the contact more. Um, and anything maybe with a bit of a low palate or that doesn't like a lot of pressure in its mouth really appreciates this bit. Then, these three bits here, you can see they're all a very similar shape. This is the happy tongue. And again, it comes in a slightly thicker mouthpiece as well. This is similar shape. Um, if your horse prefers a metal bit, they can go really well in this. We've then got the ported barrel. Let's have to make sure I get it up the right way, which um, even though it keeps its shape, it has a couple of joints in there, but it can never nutcracker and it keeps the port. So for horses that like a little bit more movement in the bit, um, they can also mouth the roller in the middle. Um, that's a really lovely bit. And then we have this Bomber Blue, and this is more of a plastic molded bit. Um, this particular one has been curved that way as well. Usually they just come in a straight one. I think this might be a special one. Um, and I really love this bit for horses that are a little bit backed off by metal. So as you can see, when I talk about how the bits come in different um, cheeks with the same mouthpiece, I'm a bit of a fan of the Bomber Blue. So we have our snaffle and obviously that one is the egg butt snaffle. For me, I love an egg butt snaffle because when measuring these bits, Bombers give you um, some guidelines as to whether or not you add half a centimetre if it's a loose ring um, compared to an egg butt. And so I can get the bit to sit quite closely to the side of the mouth without them rubbing when I use an egg butt, which I like. That's just my preference. Uh, this is the DC Morgan, which is the fully articulated bit and it swivels um, as well. And the idea behind this is that if I could actually grab it, there's, there's no pressure on the bit. The horse can move this mouthpiece to where it's comfortable. And I find that um, the majority of horses that I've ridden have really taken to this bit. So I think, uh, what are we, four out of five, three out of five of mine go in this on the flat and then Lewis jumps uh, in one. Um, yeah, so it's a very versatile bit depending on the horse. And then Again, we have the same Bomber Blue, this time in a Pelham. And I used to use that Show Jumping Diesel. And then this one is um, a Williams, which is like a little bit of a small sort of Dutch gag situation. It's a really nice little bit. Um, so you can see how versatile the Bomber's bits are. Now these rubber rings that are on the side um, they come with a lot of the bombers bits, not all of them, and you can also buy them separately. Now they're not legal for dressage, so you need to take them off, but that's easy, you just stretch them over the top. But these are just to prevent any rubbing that may occur on the side of the horse's mouth. And generally speaking, the more sensitive horses are probably more prone to that than some others. But you can see that this bit here, the action of that is to, to move and to slide. So you can imagine that just having that rubber ring on the side of the skin helps to prevent any rubbing that may occur. And you can get them in different colors, so it doesn't have to be orange. You can do the matchy-matchy with the rubber rings. So we're gonna do a really quick, who wears what bit tack box tour. So we're gonna start with Lewis and Zazi. Lewis's bridle, he has the flexible melon. I've wrapped a little bit of latex around this, which is legal for dressage, only because I'm getting a replacement for this one and it's got a little tiny crack in it. But he's got the egg butt sides and he is in a, is he a 120? Yes, it's a 120. That's for his dressage. And then for show jumping, he goes in this, this is actually a happy tongue dressage DC. So this is metal under here. And I wrapped that in latex because I, again, wanted to mimic this flexible melon feel, 
but I needed just a little bit more in the show jumping because he gets a little bit keen. And then for cross country, because he has a really long stride, he goes in a jumping DC. So you can see this is the same, it swivels, it's got the swivelly ring at the top, but it has this ring on the side and that means it's not legal for dressage and it's a jumping bit and that just gives us a little bit of leverage and he doesn't have any latex wrapped around the bit so therefore he's uh, more sensitive to pull up. And we have this strap at the back, which is kind of like, it's not really like a curb chain, it's just a strap to keep the bit straight in the mouth and provide a little bit of um, pressure at the back of his chin. And he's really easy to, to pull up and shorten his long stride. So that's Lewis. And then Zazi. So Zazi most of the time goes in a flexible mullen. This is her jumping bit. This is the Kimberly D cheek and I love this because it's got the D on the side here which means it stays in the mouth really well so instead of putting rubber rings on it because she's really sensitive everywhere she will rub from anything just by having these egg butt D sides means the bit stays um, super straight in her mouth and it's really easy to turn her because those bars at the side here help to turn so um, snaffles for jumping the Kimberly D is probably my favorite cheek to put on them and she is a 120 and her dressage bit is a latex covered DC. Actually, I think she was wearing this one because if I want a little bit more collection, I pop her in a DC, but still I want that to mimic the um, flexible mullen. Okay, next tack box. In this comprehensive tack box, we have Vendi and Huey and Vendi is a very, quite a big, strong, magnificent horse. So he has a little variety in his bits. Um, he's usually in this, which is the dressage DC. This is a bomber blue mouthpiece under here. And when he's feeling a little bit uh, more backed off the bit, I've put the latex on it just to get him to take it a little bit more. When he's been really, really good, I've been starting to progress him back into the snaffle. So we keep him with the same mouthpiece, but we're going to the egg butt. Um, and as he learns to carry himself more, he can go in this but that's not all the time. And then if he's a little bit strong, so post cross country or post jumping and stuff, I wanna do flat work. Uh, the Dressage DC is his go-to. Now for, we'll go to Huey. Huey on the flat is a bit experimental actually. He was in a Dressage DC. Um, and I then have been playing back with snaffles with him. So he's at the moment, he's got the happy tongue, the egg butt happy tongue um, on his bridle. And then I tried him in the ported barrel and then I might actually try him in this one, which is the um, bomber blue, but it's straight as compared to that one, which had a bend in it. And FYI, this little strap at the back, it's really good for turning, keeps the bit in the mouth, stops the, um, the rings of the bit um, going out to the side and it just, just really helps to centre it. Um, not legal for dressage, but great for jumping. Um, so yeah, so here we were a little bit experimental as he carries himself better. Now, show jumping up here. Both Huey and Bendy go in the same bit, which I just have to swap it over. So they are in a running gag and again we're in a bomber blue mouthpiece and we've got, oh they're stuck together, we've got rubber rings um, and you can see that that's the running gag style and this is a progression from the snaffle so they go in this style of snaffle, um, they were in a Kimball wick which they do cross country, that became a little bit too much for them show jumping so we went to the running gag because basically I can ride in it like a snaffle but I've got that extra bit of leverage um, for when I need it. We'll deal with this in a minute and then welcome to the world of eventers we go to the cross country bit where they get long striding a little bit strong and I need to pull them up really quickly. This is the Kimball wick and this probably looks exactly like a DC Morgan, except this part up here doesn't swivel. So DC Morgan has a swivelly bit up the top. Really can't see that very well, can you? It's, this moves. 
whereas the Kimber Wick, it's fixed. So the Kimber Wick gives you some good leverage. Um, it's only short from the mouthpiece to the rein. It's not long like a Pelham or a American Gag. So I don't want them rolling their noses over too much. I just want to be able to bring them back to me, but keep them up off the forehand. And it's got a chain um, at the back and I can loosen or tighten the chain. I can put the reins in this ring or forward again if I want more power or I can shorten the cheek pieces. So I've got three options of control. Um, and this Kimber Wick's got a long shank for a bit more um, pulling up power. And again, the Vend, he also goes in the same bit funnily enough. Um, and he's like quite sensitive and um, but really big and has a massive stride. So um, big, bolshy, magnificent, long striding horse who is also sensitive, doesn't need too much of a long shank because he'll throw his head around. Okay. And last but not least, we have Diesel. Um, now his, he was the first one I tried a Kimble Wick on. And basically I had a Kimble Wick when I was a kid. Like it was the sort of thing you put on your pony when you were like 12 years old and you couldn't stop in a snaffle. This one's got a shorter shank from here to here. So it has less leverage and a bit less strength. Um, and it has a swivel mouthpiece. So Vendy's mouthpiece didn't swivel, whereas this one does. So depending on the horse, if they throw their head around, the swivel mouthpiece might be better. They can place that with their tongue where they want it. Um, again, slightly less power in it because the shank is a little bit shorter. But see, you can mix and match all this kind of stuff. You can basically find the perfect bit for your horse, which is amazing. So that's for him. And then at the moment he is retired from competition. So I just ride him in whatever bit he goes well in. And he was a little bit strong and, and um, fresh. So this bit here is a happy tongue, Williams gag. And he's super light, super soft. It doesn't have to be dressage legal because we're not going into a dressage arena and I can trundle him up and down some hills and, you know, go hacking and do stuff. And um, when he softens up a little bit, he can go back in a snaffle. But while he's being a little bit fresh and a bit keen, that's a, a really good bit for him. And I thought I might put some rubber rings on it because doing this video reminded me that I should probably do that. We're going to do a how to put the rings on tutorial. One recommendation is to put them in, these ones are actually really easy to stretch on, but some of the old school ones, put them in really warm water and make them a little bit more pliable and flexible. And they usually will go onto the bit a lot easier. So, right. So you find the ring, it's got the print on the outside. Now I'm gonna stretch it over the widest part first. I've never had kids, but <laughs> oh, this must be what it's like. <laughs> so you pull it over like so. Put that one on and the bomber's writing to the outside. I mean, you don't have to, but it looks better. And same thing, stretch it. I haven't had one split before, but if you're a bit rough with them and they're a bit old, they might get a split in them and like so there you go and then you have a bit with the rubber rings on it thanks for watching my bit video if you have anything else that you'd like to see regarding bits then just uh, write that in the comments below don't forget to like subscribe and share the content and again leave us lots of comments because we love to hear from you see ya